Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel and welcome to bonus weather video number two for this week. And we're going to be talking today about some interesting uh, tidbits about uh, temperature and moisture and instability and solar energy and how it affects the temperature and all that kind of stuff. So uh, pardon my poor artistry here, but that green indicates the ground and the blue is the uh, blue sky. It's uh, let's just assume that it's a, a beautiful, beautiful day. OK, and. We're going to imagine a line of constant temperature here, uh, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? And at the top of this layer, it's about 5,000 feet high, so about a mile, okay? Now, let's suppose it's a clear, calm, crisp winter morning, and the temperature at the ground is about 28 degrees, and there's a big inversion. In other words, the temperature increases rather rapidly with height. So several hundred feet above the ground, the temperature is actually at 50. And then the rest of the atmosphere, uh, for the rest of the 5,000 feet, the temperature descends at a normal rate of about 5.5 degrees per 1,000 feet. And maybe at the top of that layer, the temperature is about 25. Okay. Now, here's the interesting thing. When the sun comes up, and it starts to heat the ground, and then the ground heats the air above it, what happens is that the amount of energy required by the sun to knock out this inversion is basically proportional to the area of this skinny triangle right in here, okay? So it's not much. So the temperature could rocket upward very, very quickly from the upper 20s to close to 50 in just a matter of a couple of hours because it just doesn't require that much energy on the part of the sun to wipe out that inversion. However, once we get up to the, around the 50 degree mark, then it's a whole different ball game. Then if you want to raise the temperature of the ground just three or four or five degrees, you have to wipe out this amount of energy in this huge rectangle that goes all the way up to about 5,000 feet. Why? Because once the lapse rate is the, what we call the dry adiabatic lapse rate, which is 5.5 degrees per 1,000 feet, the atmosphere is considered to be well mixed. Okay, And so in order to raise the temperature a couple of degrees at the ground, you have to raise the temperature of that entire layer of the atmosphere, in this case about 5,000 feet. And so this is why temperatures on a clear, calm morning rocket upward for the first couple of hours and then the rate of temperature increase from that point forward is much, much slower because uh, a given amount of energy now has to heat an entire layer okay, several thousand feet thick, as opposed to that little inversion layer that's only several hundred feet thick, okay? Does that make sense? All right, the other thing I wanted to share with you, and when I first show you this diagram, you're going to go crazy. This is called a skew T-chart, and the reason that it's called a skew T-chart is that these solid lines that you see right here, these are lines of equal temperature, and so they're skewed. Instead of being straight up and down, they're skewed. And so that's one of the reasons they call it a skew T chart. But the reason the lines are skewed is that all the other lines on that chart have to adhere to certain mathematical relationships relating to temperature. Okay. So let's just talk about a couple of these here. These solid lines that go like this are what we call dry adiabats, which means that uh, air moving along this passageway here, or these lines, basically is not exchanging heat with the environment at all. Any changes in temperature are all due to changes in pressure. So when the pressure goes up, you have compression, things heat up. When the pressure goes down, you have expansion and things cool down. But there's no actual heat being added or subtracted from the system. It's simply undergoing changes in pressure, which is resulting in a temperature decrease. These dotted lines in here are what we call moist adiabats. And this means when air rises and it becomes saturated, then heat is released due to the process of condensation. So instead of decreasing at about 5.5 degrees per 1,000 feet, now it only decreases at about 3.5 degrees per 1,000 feet because of that release of heat due to the process of condensation. So let's imagine that one of these weather balloons goes up someplace around the world, and this is what it finds. It finds the temperature decreasing right along one of these solid dry adiabatic, dry adiabatic lines here. So it's going down at about 5.5 degrees per 1,000 feet. 
And then above about a mile, it continues to decrease, but not as quickly. And then it de decreases in height all the way up to about, oh gosh, 30, 35,000 feet maybe. And then it begins to either uh, be constant with height or can even increase with height. This is the, uh, what we call the tropopause, the top of the troposphere. And then you get up into the stratosphere up in here. Okay. Now, the dew point temperature as the air rises decreases at about a half a degree per thousand feet. Okay. Not very much. So... If an individual air parcel, not the environment, but just a little individual air parcel, starts off here, it moves along that red line, the dew point moves along this green line, and the two meet right here. At that point, the air becomes saturated, and you start to release heat due to the process of condensation. Then what happens? Well, now, instead of that air going along the dry adiabat, it goes up along what we call the moist adiabatic lapse rate. So it's not decreasing in temperature as quickly. And so you see a big difference here between here's the environment and here's this air parcel that's much warmer than the environment, okay? And we call that area in between this dotted line here and this solid line here, CAPE, which stands for Convective Available Potential Energy. Another one of those acronyms there, okay? And the larger the CAPE, or the larger this area that you see in here between the dotted line and the solid line, the more unstable the atmosphere is and the more acceleration an air parcel is going to experience. So with this amount of CAPE, you would expect a very, very strong updraft in a thunderstorm, and the air continues to accelerate. Remember, whenever there's a force, there's acceleration. Force equals mass times acceleration. So as long as there's a force, the speed is getting higher and higher, and the maximum speed occurs right when the air parcel matches the temperature of the environment. This is not the maximum speed, it's just the maximum acceleration. And then, as the air parcel gets colder than the environment, then, at that point, it begins to slow down and eventually will start to uh, come back down toward the Earth, okay? But uh, as long as it's buoyant, warmer than the environment, it's going to continue to accelerate. So this is one of the tools that we use uh, when forecasting thunderstorms. If we see that there's a lot of CAPE forecast uh, with a given weather event, then we know the chance of uh, at very least strong to severe thunderstorms is there. And then there are other factors that come into play as to whether or not you're going to get tornadoes or something like that. All right, that's the bonus weather video for today. I hope at least a little bit of that made sense. Hope you have a nice weekend, and we'll be back uh, on uh, Monday with another daily weather update, and the next bonus weather video will be coming up on Tuesday. We'll see you then.